So how many antenna cables was that, Chris? Uh, a lot. This last crimpy here. I don't have the mic on so I can curse and swear about it. <laughs> Done. Well, uh, that GPS antenna is only on finger tight. We should tighten it down. Okay, so after spending all day crimping antenna cables, toiling away, we are finally ready to sort of slide the new face into the panel. Just have to attach the back shells, back, sh uh, back plates, back plates, so the back plate. That's what Chris has got in his hand and they attach to the back of these frames. Real easy. Snaps as well, does it? Oh no, it's got four. It's oh, got it a leg on the in. bottom, yeah. It's got a leg on the bottom and it snaps uh, in. Okay, so are we uh this one might matter for top and bottom, it doesn't really identify. Yeah, the tabs. Okay. Dope. Alright. Okay, this is the autopilot here. This guy, isn't he? Oh no, that's the number two dyno. That's the number two dyno. Yeah. So it's gonna be above and go. Yeah. That one is autopilot. It's gonna wanna come. Under, yeah. under. Yeah, so yep. that's okay. That's fine where it is. Okay. Um, These this guys is the autopilot recover. I might as well put that on. Or I want to put the the A three dot or whatever it is. No, this one same up down. Um, screw in the back. Uh, you can just look the at the steps. I would think that this we got it right because J1's on the left and J2's on the right. Source. Air source. Is this one? Okay, that's the one we're going to do. A, we need to put a. Uh, yeah, what I was going to do is get a big quarter it, washer that'll sit beside behind it. Yep. And then it's a matter of making something pretty that sits on the face of it. So. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Look at what a T1 806 or. Once it's. Oh, Chris, if only yeah. that was. I got a lathe. Let me cut it. Do you mind if I fuck around with it for no, a bit? I'm no. just going to cut that thinner. Yeah. Um, that's perfect. Yeah. And this, like, can I do it? Am I capable? Do I have the technology? <laughs> yeah, there's some machine that somewhere is just rolling his eyes going, really? <laughs> <laughs> So the reason Chris is doing this is it's my screw up. I miscommunicated between um, advanced uh, approach fast stack and Lyle at six pack about a switch size. That's on me and Chris is going to make it right. Bushing. We'll see if we're going to make it right. This may not make it. Finish up the plate. It was like a $12,000 job we had uh, done. Whoa, look at that, Chris. Okay. And so the... This one in it. I wonder if I got it, could have went just a little bit thinner so it would lock out better. Oh, that's yeah, pretty good. that's good. Yeah. Those ones you need the glove in three seconds. And, yeah. Because it goes, it just goes around a couple of those, doesn't it? Yeah, it goes around two of them. Um, okay. Okay. I got it, I'll get it. Yep. Yeah, I just have them on finger tight, I guess. Looks good. I, like you'll you'll see once I get it up there, I'll do some zip tie magic. It'll look like it belongs there. An extra six or eight inches just to. We gotta go your side first, do we? Yeah. Oh, that's for that, okay.
What time is it, Chris? I don't want to keep you. We're trying to fit. <laughs> Fitment. So we've got a ton of wires now. We've got extra stuff and whatever. So at this point, we've got almost moving. Okay. And so we're not bolted up 100% anymore here. We did put it up. Everything fits. Uh, but there is a, a ton of wires back here right now. So we're just trying to get this sort of situated up. We've got a couple clamps we've mounted up in there. Uh, some cables that, you know, that need to come up out of the way. And then we'll figure out how to whatever. So the next uh, bit of time, maybe hour or two or three, maybe the day, <laughs> we'll get this tied up in such a fashion that we're free to move. Uh, and then what we've got left is our circuit breakers here, which just arrived in that box actually. Uh, and, you know, and then the last plug in and then boom, we're going. So we're close, but you know, 90% done, 90% to go. So that's where we're at. It's always the last 90%. So the, <laughs> the wiring harness saved a ton of time and, and, and problems. But at the same time, there's so many wires back there that, that keeping it clear of the of the yoke is going to be a problem. Um, but I really think that uh, Approach Fast Act did a great job on that wiring harness. Oh, they always do. They're fantastic. Uh, I don't know if we had to build it here in the in the shop. Uh, you know, first of all, the quality wouldn't be what it is that we have here. Um, the other is that uh, even if we shorten it up, I think like, we're just busy back here. Like how many uh, we did antenna cables we have. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, six cables going back there that all, you know, of varying lengths. And we did our best to keep them up and out of the way, but there's not a ton of room. Like we've been, uh, uh, is it Kyle? Kyle, the, you know, we, if we push this, like you can see, we're just clearing it by about, oh, a centimeter back yeah. there. So everything's sort of tight in. And I don't think, uh, you know, there would have been any way to, to beat this. And so we just keep plugging away and getting things tied up and up out of the way. And slowly we get it moving a little further. Uh, we got clamps that we're going in here to hold things out of the way. A little bit of rerouting to, you know, we'll see, now we start to see where the problems lie. So we're moving them around. Yeah, so we'll get there. It's just, uh, you know, when you get this much stuff in, whatever, like originally, well, remember we took it all apart, everything came out, the thing was blank. And so we're, we're just adding to that. <laughs> I'm going to make a little bus bar here, and so I'll bring some power over from our uh, uh, avionics bus, and then, you know, just hook it here, and these all mount up, and the, we got a little, uh, the holes drilled on the center of the panel, because it's full, and we don't have any more room, so we're adding other bars everywhere, so. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah. Should we pull some circuit breakers? Oh, so, yeah. Okay. And then. Calm. Spare. Everything else is fine. Okay. All right. One thing at a time. So, this display should be coming up. Yep. Okay. That seems fine. So, the other display. Is the EFIS, or uh, is that right? It's display yep. two. Display two, yeah. and the EFIS at the same time. Okay, that's the EFIS okay. there. Okay. Uh, transponder, we might as well come in one. Uh, this one, that's the spare now. This is the ADSB. 
autopilot. There it goes. And the calm is this is the audio panel. Well, that should come up. Oh, there it comes. Okay. And then this is the the trig comms. So that's the first comm. Right, let's turn it off. Right, and then there's the nav to the trig there. Okay, we're missing something. Then. Or unless I got okay, maybe I screwed up my positions. That should be that one. Okay, so we've got the electronics all fired up. Everything, everything works. I spent an afternoon going through the installation manuals and figuring out how to tell all of the electronics to talk to each other. So the Avidyne to the Dynon, the Dynon to the Trig, the Trig to the Avidyne, figuring out the um, how to hook up the Avidyne iPad app so that I can control it from the yoke instead of the smaller screen on the Avidyne, trying to figure out all that stuff. And I've got it pretty much working out well. Um, it's going to take me probably three or four days of hangar flying before I actually take Mike Victor uniform up in the air and try it in the air. Uh, we still have a little bit of work to do on Mike Victor uniform. It is annual time. So Chris has got a day's worth of work on the annual. And then I'm going to continue with my hangar flying, continue with the hangar flying for a couple of days after that, and then actually do the first flight. But... I probably won't film the first flight. I want to con concentrate completely on what I'm doing. My next step is to fly Mike Victor uniform um, with an instructor to learn the ins and outs of IFR. And I don't know that I'm going to film that either. Um, I'd love to bring you along for the ride. I'd love to show you what it takes to get your IFR license. But at the same time, I think it's, um, I think it's super important to pay attention. And as much as I turn the cameras on, leave them on and forget about them while I'm flying, I don't even want to bother with that before each flight. I want to concentrate on learning IFR flight. So I, if I do bring you along, it'll be very close to the end. But that's the plan with Mike Victor uniform. So big shout out to uh, Lyle at Six Pack Arrow for cutting an amazing panel. To Approach Fast Stack for building a great harness, wiring harness for us. That saved a ton of time and headache. And uh, maybe the next time you see me, I'll be most of the way through my IFR training. I might even be an IFR rated pilot at that point. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking around to the end. Thanks for watching to the very end of the video and thanks for watching this next little bit. Um, once again, in 2025, I am raising money for Hope Air and participating in the Give Hope Wings uh, flight across Canada um, that both raises funds for the Hope Air charity, but also raises awareness in the various communities that we stop in and in the wider community through you um, that this service exists and that this need needs to be met. Um, Hope Air is a charity that uh, allows Canadians who need health care that is not available in their community to travel to the larger cities in Canada where that, uh, that need can be met. Canada geographically is a massive country and some communities are pretty far flung um, and people end up having to drive 12, 14 hours to get to where the treatment exists that they need. And while health care in Canada is universal, um, any Canadian shows up at the door of the hospital, care is freely given, you have to get to the hospital or you have to get where the treatment is administered. Um, and for a lot of people, this can be a very difficult time in their life. They're juggling a lot of things. Um, they may not have the financial resources to fly to Toronto and, you know, put themselves up in a hotel room for a couple of nights and meals and so on and so forth and hope air is a charity that takes care of that takes that burden away takes that weight off of off of people's shoulders and allows them to just get well so my part in this is to raise awareness and to raise money um, i work with other pilots who fly some of these people who are seeking treatment from smaller flying communities to larger centers like thunder bay where they can get a commercial airliner 
that will take them to Toronto or Winnipeg, so on and so forth. Um, and over the last couple of years, we've raised a lot of money for Hope Air. Last year alone, you um, donated around $40,000 um, to help out with this, with this cause. I'm very grateful for that. Um, I feel very blessed that we have created a community here on YouTube um, amongst everything else that's going on in the world where, where we can help people. So once again, I'm doing this. Um, once again, we're flying. I will be putting the itinerary down in the, in the description box of the places we're going to be in early June where you can stop in and, and we can meet. Um, also links to Hope Air Charity so that you can check them out, see what they, what they do. And if you're moved to help, there will be a link to the fundraising page. Um, for everyone who has, who, has, who has given in the past, I thank you enormously. And everyone who is about to give, thank you.